Hello, thanks for joining me on Life and Surround. Today, at long last, Jethro Tolls Stormwatch, 40th Anniversary, Force 10 Edition. We'll wait in stone circles until the force comes through. The lines join and feign discords and the Stormwatch groups. Alright, so why did we have to wait so long for Jethro Tull's Stormwatch 40th Anniversary book set? Apparently, they did not manufacture enough in the initial pressing. Some vendors received more copies than others, like Amazon US, and other vendors sold out very quickly and had to wait to fulfill even pre-orders. So it took Amazon UK right around a month to get me mine. I could have paid about 20% more with Amazon US, but I decided to wait it out. And in a way it's fitting because this is a dark and brooding album with some nautical themes. Obviously the storm motif, which graces the cover and embodies the lyrics at certain points. And it's cold and rainy here, so it feels like the perfect season to get acquainted with this album and to digest the 40th anniversary book set. Opening it up, you get the album remixed by Stephen Wilson this year, and associated recordings also remixed on CD. You get two CDs worth of a live concert from 1980, and I think it is cool from a historical perspective, but doesn't sound all that great, in my opinion. And the meat and potatoes of this set is a DVD of the album mixed in 5.1 by Mr. Wilson and a whole audio DVD of the associated recordings also mixed in 5.1. You get some great pictures, you get the story of the making of Stormwatch you get an essay from the second engineer and you get a track by track breakdown of the inspiration of all of the songs the album songs and the associated recordings so it's quite a cool book I had a good time reading through it I learned a lot about the band a big part of the story here is the demise of this classic lineup and so not all of the reading is very cheery one of the most unfortunate elements of the story is the death of John Glasscock. He fell ill during the recording of the album, appears on some of the tracks, but Ian Anderson fills in on others. On a lighter note, the essay also explains that Ian Anderson bought and ran a salmon farm in Scotland for quite a few years, and it's very interesting to read about that aquaculture. So let's talk about the mix. This is a Stephen Wilson 5.1 mix, and it does live up to his usual standard of excellence. He loves to isolate main vocals up in the center channel. Black and viscous bound to cure blue lethargy. I think it's fair to say that you typically have main parts up front and supportive parts around you. The surrounds are used very nicely to extend the drums out into the room, especially floor tom flourishes. You also get keys in the surrounds quite often, overdubs, background vocals, and an echo effect off of Ian Anderson's main vocal. Though I will say that I feel like this surround mix is a bit inconsistent. During some parts of some tracks, I feel underwhelmed. And then either later in the track or in subsequent tracks, there's a lot going on in the surrounds to keep me engaged. I don't think that's particularly a fault of Stephen Wilson. I just think that at times the arrangement of this album offers more to be suitably presented in the surrounds. A very notable moment is the spoken word intro to Dunringill, performed by a British weatherman. The weather's on the change, the ice clouds change. invading, Lines join and faint the weather's on the change. Lines join in faint discord, and the storm watch blows at constant in faint discord, and the storm watch brews at constant kings as the white sea snaps at the heels of the soft... The mastering is excellent, and possibly non-existent, 
as Stephen Wilson has a preference that his mixes are untouched after he's done with them. So this 5.1 album is very crankable. I particularly love the very giant organic sound of the drums, particularly the double bass flourishes. Musically, I think that many would agree that this doesn't quite belong on the same tier as Thick as a Brick, Aqualung, and other Toll mega classics, but it is the final album from their most classic lineup. I think it does have some extremely interesting moments. I wish that they had pushed a little harder with the nautical theme, and I would have liked to have seen their live show at the time as they had the boat rigging and backdrops. Ian Anderson in the essay says he thinks he got that from Bruce Dickinson, probably from the World Slavery Tour where they did Rime of the Ancient Mariner with ship rigging and backdrops. And I always like seeing references to Bruce because he's a hero of mine, so it's nice that his theater of the mind concept inspired Toll for this tour. Don't forget, if you like this video, please give a thumbs up. If you're interested in surround music, prog, Jethro Tull, rock, pop, the various other musical forms that I cover on the channel, subscribe, leave your comments below. And as we wait for the later years by Pink Floyd to show up, I hope that you have lots of awesome music to keep you entertained in the meantime. And until then, my friends, live life in surround.